Hello, my name is Move. Hello. Hi everybody. So today what we're going to do is try to set up the potentiometer on the bicep of the robot. And for that we're going to use a tool that is within my robot lab called servo calibration or servo calibrator, something like that. Let's see that right away. So you have a gear over here that can rotate. Okay, so your potentiometer is going to be set on the back of that gear and it can be set in any position you want. It can be set this way, it can be set this way, it can be set this way, it doesn't really matter somehow. What matters, what counts, is the polarity of those two ex external wires, the white one and the black one. The middle one doesn't, doesn't need to move. Okay, so ideally what I do is set up my potentiometer on the back like this because then the wires can run up and it's easier. So let's say you have already fixed your potentiometer behind and the gear is mounted and this little thing that is holding the gear is set up as well. Now what we want to do is make a test and see if the polarity is set up correctly and adjust it on my robot lab. So to do this without breaking anything, what you want to do is remove, first of all, the piston from the bicep. You have it like this. And in order not to let it hang or anything like this, what you can do is use the bolt that is used normally over here for the to hold the, bicep, the, the forearm. You can use it and put it in here. So like this, it's not just uh, hanging on its wires. Okay, now we have it like this. What we're gonna do is um, run a test in my robot lab and see how this is turning compared to when we move the potentiometer over here. Okay, so the potentiometer can move like this or like this. What we want to do is set it up totally to the back like this. Okay, so it's going against the clock and you set it up to the maximum. Let's see now with my robot lab. So we're going to use my robot lab and there's a little tool in my robot lab that allows to uh, calibrate our servo motors. So I'm going to open my folder in which one I have my robot lab and select tools and servo, servo calibration. Double click on it and it starts my robot lab automatically. It sets an Arduino and a servo. So the Arduino, I'm going to click on the tab and select the correct Arduino. If ever it doesn't show anything yet over here, you can refresh and then it will show the Arduinos that are connected. Here in this uh, demo uh, tutorial, I'm expecting that you already uploaded this code into your Arduino to, uh, to run uh, my robot lab. There's other tutorials for to do that. Anyway, so here I'm going to select the correct Arduino to move the left bicep, which I'm currently um, setting up. So I select my Arduino board. I make sure that I select the correct Arduino board into this, if it's a Uno or a Mega or whatever. Mine is a Mega 2560, and that's what I choose. Now, it's ready, and I can connect automatically my robot lab connects to the Arduino. Now I'm going to go into the servo tab. Over here, I'm going to select Arduino. Okay. And I'm going to select the pin of the servo motor on my Arduino. In my case, the BCEP, it's going to be the pin 8. Now, if I attach, if there's power already to my servo motor, when I'm going to do this, it's going to start to turn. So let's do that. Now I can hear my servo motor turning. Okay. 
and if I want to stop it, I can disable. Now the, the server module is stopped. Okay, <clears throat> so what we want to do first is set up our um, input map like it is in the configuration by default on InMove. So for this to do, what I'm going to do is open again my robot lab, my folder, go into InMove directory in the configuration, and I'm going to select the left arm. Okay, and I'm going to open it with, uh, in my case, it's a text editor that is called Sublime Text. You can see the name over here. It's, it's free. You can use it for free. And uh, this is going to show me the uh, map output for my uh, servo motors and the maps input for the servo motors. So you can see here in the input, which is the same than over here, it's 0 and 180. So I want to have the same 0 and here BICEP is 90. That's the default for the robot arm to move. So over here, I'm going to set up this to be at 90. Uh, the cursor, OK, this is done. And now the output map over here, if we look uh, over here, the map minimum map output and maximum map output, we have by default 5 and 70. But this you can change to whatever you need. So this is what we're going to look. I'm going to move this to the side, close this to make it less confusing. So for to do this, I'm going to move this to 5 and this to 70 something close if I can yeah right okay now if I enable normally my servo motor is going to start to turn and this is what is happening now so now we see that um, the servo motor is turning okay so it's turning clockwise okay but if I turn slightly the gear of my potentiometer is going to kind of stop. And then if I go further down clockwise, the servo motor is going to turn faster. So you see, when I turn the gear clockwise over here, over here it's going the opposite of clockwise. It's going turning anti clock. Okay? And when I go back, with the potentiometer, if I go to the other side, you can see it's going clockwise. All right, so that's what you want to have. If this is not happening, if when I turn this, it doesn't turn anti clock over here, that means your polarity of wires on your server on your potentiometer is uh, inverted. So you need to desolder and solder the two wires in order to have the um, the white one instead of the black and the black one instead of the white one. So let's see what is next now. So next what we want to do is rebuild back the bicep. So for to do so, we're going to remove this bolt and mount back the piston into its socket. So I'm going to turn it by hand. Uh, I went a little bit too far, yeah, like this. And once it's put back like this, I'm going to still screw it a little bit up like this. All right. What we want next is um, mount back the forearm and what uh, what we want to make sure is that we didn't move this little gear so this gear is set up like it was anti-clock okay to the maximum and over here you see on the back of this gear there is a gap and this gap should 
should touch over here when I'm going to put it back together. This is quite important because this, when it's touching this, this is the maximum position open for the for the arm and for the bicep. So I will put this back together like this, making sure that the gap over here is at the minimum. Okay, this is not assembled yet, and when I let drop the arm, I can see over here that the gap is closed. So that means when the gear is at the maximum anti-clock, the gap is closed. You can see the lining of the arm, it's almost, almost uh, straight, if we would call that straight. And if I turn it manually like this, then the potentiometer can rotate. Now what we want to do is just connect this together like that. Set up the bolt and now we are ready to test with the tool calibration and to make sure that uh, the adjustment of the potentiometer is going to be set in the um, mappings. Now back into my robot lab. If I click on enable, automatically the servo motor is going to be powered. So if anything is wrong, it might break something. So always make sure when you make this kind of test to have a hand on your power source so you can disconnect the servo motor easily or just uh, any switch, you know, like a panic switch. Anyway, so when I enable this, the servo, motor, the servo motor is going to be under power. And you can see over here, it's doing it. So when I move this, the uh, cursor over here, automatically the arm is going to move. And you can see that it's moving up. So now the potentiometer is correctly set and it's working correctly in the right direction. Okay, what we want to set now is to make sure that the output map fits exactly the maximum and minimum of your servo motor. So when I set up to zero over here, I already have five over here. So I'm making sure that it's not pushing too hard. What we can do is set up this to let's say 16 and we try again to move. And when it's going to zero, you can see it doesn't go all the way down. The arm is not going all the way down over here. So once again, what we want to do is reach the minimum gap over here. So when I had five, I was pretty well set up. Okay. And if I move up my arm to the maximum, like this, I want to make sure that it doesn't break anything and that the uh, piston is going almost to the top, to the maximum. And this is with 70 on my setting. It was a security, but I can go up a little bit and I'm going to go to 80 and check out. And I can see my bicep can go almost all the way up without breaking anything and down all the way down without breaking anything. So now that we have found the maximum and minimum output, those numbers over here, the 5 and 80, I'm going to put them into my minimum and map minimum and maximum map output in the configura configuration file. So I have over here five, so that's correct, five. 
and here I'm going to change this to 80. And then I save the configuration file. And the BICEP is ready to run with my robot lab. So if I close this over here and I restart my robot lab with all the configuration files, the BICEP is going to work perfectly. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and we see you next time for another one. Ciao! Hello, my name is Anmu.